I mean, the, the first step really is really about having the conversation with the patients. You know, we, a lot of dermatologists use the term precancerous, you know, but yeah, we don't really focus on the consequence of skin cancer as why we need to treat. And, you know, I make the running joke about precancerous is kind of like, you know, pre-boarding at the airport. You know, it's still technically boarding, whether you like it or not. And, uh, you know, pre-diabetes is kind of a TV term. It's really essentially metabolic syndrome or one step of hyperglycemia. But the reality is actinic keratosis, you know, if we don't treat the one that's in front of us, we're also missing the 10 that are on their way. And the bigger problem is, you know, again, the, the risk of squamous cell, you know, maybe in the range of less than 10%, but about 80 to 90% of squamous cells had a actinic keratosis as a precursor. So I, I make the running analogy about hockey. You know, it's always bad to lose a hockey game one to zero, and you never want to have that one be the one that beats you. So I think more so in terms of treatment, you know, we have to have the conversation with patients about what are we doing to protect them in the sun? You know, what are we doing to make sure that we are examining them, you know, routinely? And then what photo protection strategies are they being used besides sunscreen? Things like clothing and polypodium leucotomas and some of the other or extracts and some of the other things that go along with it. And then, of course, you know, the algorithm for treatment is really different than what the guidelines show. The guidelines from the academy, I think, are actually not very uh, salient to daily practice. I think what we need is an algorithm. And I, I kind of use the example like dates. You know, you go on a first date, you meet someone, just like your first date with a patient, you know, you freeze them and you see, you freeze what you see, but you set them up for photodynamic therapy when their schedule allows, when you say schedule the second date. And then you want to treat within that time with some sort of topical agent, uh, which again, terbinibulin is nice because the ointment is applied five days uh, in sequence, but the reactions last about 15 days, 29 days, they're really quiet. And then uh, the re the benefits will outlast, which is really what we want out of a topical therapy compared to 5-FU and amiquimod, which have, again, some more brisk uh, local skin reactions. Um, they're all effective therapies. It's just a matter of getting something into someone's hands. I think that's really the, the bottom line. And then, of course, the, you know, the frequency of treatments, you know, is really something we talk about because, again, if, it, if that's a three-month timeline, we know that with two-year data for the transplant patients that were studied a long time ago, if you do photodynamic therapy within two months or, or uh, every two months for them, you'll reduce their squamous cell risk by 90%. So there's really a lot of benefits to, you know, treating for the long term and having a regular plan. And, you know, I, I always get the strategy about treating around the time change because that's less time they're outside. And it's also in between holiday seasons and summer va summer vacation when patients don't really want to get treated that way. So, you know, the, the experience of the patient, you know, and the understanding starts with the day that they come in and get diagnosed. And again, it goes back to the conversation of cancer. You know, the there was a survey done that shows that if you mention the word cancer, the dermatologists bring up the term cancer, adherence to the plan is about 90% versus it drops to about 60% when the consequence of cancer is not really introduced in the subject or in the in the plan. So there really has to be some element of severity to, to make the patients understand that, okay, now we've got one, there's probably 10 more on their way, and this really isn't something we cure. I mean, we can't go back and put the genie back in the bottle and undo your sun damage. That being said, we still need to be aware of darker skin types and their risk of skin cancer as well, even though they may not present the same way. And then we have to be cognizant of the more hypertrophic actinic keratosis and make sure we're, our, our threshold for biopsying those are pretty low.